Hello, everybody. Hello, knitters. My name is Barbara Benson, and we are live here on YouTube. I am an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make silly videos here. And I really enjoy chatting with y'all here on YouTube. I think I got everything right this time and just had to push one button to go. Um, Oh, so we just started chatting a little while everyone was waiting. Uh, my golfer has said she successfully tried Magic Loop this week after four months of knitting swatches. Fantastic. Congratulations. High five yourself for learning a new technique. I Magic Loop everything. It is like my go-to. So, and I have a swatch that I need to do. Um... We were discussing golf versus knitting, and I'm still going to say that golf's harder than knitting, but hello, Devoted to Knit, Deborah from Kentucky. Um, yeah, I'm so excited. Deborah from Kentucky said, sure wish I could meet you personally this Saturday at a good yard. So this Saturday is local yarn store day. It is a day that the industry gets together to celebrate the local yarn store because without the local yarn store, really the knitting, crocheting, weaving, fiber arts community would be a, be a lonelier place. The, the local yarn store is someplace where you can come and you can touch and you can feel. And so, so uh, we have choose a Saturday um, in April and we haven't had one in a while because of COVID, of course. So I'm super excited about that. And my boss, I don't normally work Saturdays. And when I do work, I have a tendency to, I mean, I have to work, so I have to do work stuff. So I can't always spend the time chatting with people and teaching people and answering questions. So I'm going to be at the store. Um, we set up tents in the parking lot when we have big events and I'm going to be under the tents just chilling and chatting and teaching and talking. And I'm super excited about it. And I wish you could be there too, Deborah. But hopefully you have a local yarn store that you can go and support. If not, you know, my yarn store do, does have a online option. So there it is. Um Oh, excellent. Deborah is going to have a question. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Harley. Um, you know, it's funny. Magic Loop, I know people have like sticking points with them, but once you get it, you get it. It's actually kind of funny. When I first started working at a good yarn. My boss, Susan, didn't magic loop at all. She said she hated it. And finally, I sat down and I took a little time and I taught her how to do it. And now she magic loops everything. So you just got to work on, as a teacher or an instructor, you have to work on working through different ways to explain it until you find the thing that clicks with that student. Because everyone learns in a different way. And the way I, I'm constantly trying to come up with different ways to explain things, because if I only have the one way to explain thing and it doesn't make any sense to you, me just repeating the same thing, not helpful, not helpful at all to most people. So hello, Cindy. Um, hello, Jame. Okay. I know one of these days I'm going to get the name right. It's Jame or Jamie, but I'm going with Jame right now. Hello, Her Dazzling Creations. Um, woohoo! Is Magic Loop hard on your cables? I've I've never had a problem with it. I uh, I think that if you tried to do Magic Loop on a cable that was too short, it might put a little stress onto it. But I typically Magic Loop with like a forty inch cable, and they're just out there flopping in the winds. I mean, and no, it I do not think it puts any additional stress. Um, hello Heather, hello Mickey. Midlothian. That's a fun word. It sounds like you are like in Middle Earth. You're in like Tolkien land, Midlothian. It sounds like someplace elves should live and sit around and lounge and things like that. Yay, Magic Loop. Serenity and Stitches. Hello. Hi, Christine. Christine Guest is here. I'm so excited. So just so y'all know, I have put an invitation out on one of the Slack groups that I participate in, that it's a private group for designers, knitwear designers, to like talk with each other about 
industry stuff. And I put an invite out to all the designers there that if they would love to come, if they would like to come and hang out with us on these lives, I would love to have them. Because as you know, a lot of times y'all have questions that I can't answer. <laughs> so maybe they can pick up my slack when it comes to things like socks and garments and things that I don't know, because I don't know everything. And also one of my big goals for Watch Barbara Knit is to use it to use the voice that I have to lift up other designers and introduce y'all to each other because they might have exactly what you're looking for if I don't have it. So um, oh, there we go. So, okay. <laughs> Her dazzling creations. We'll get to that. It's the new thing. Midlothian is a suburb of Richmond. I still think it's a suburb of Rivendell, and you'll have to convince me otherwise. <laughs> Hello in San Francisco, Julie. Hello, Allison, north of England. Very cool. I love it when we have people from everywhere. That is what is so cool about the internet. There's Knit Eco Chic. She is also a designer, um, and she is amazing. Ruth. There we go. And Ruth from Central Pennsylvania, she is also another designer. And she is here if you have crochet questions. And she also does Tunisian crochet. So, so we've got a lot of brilliant minds in here. You're in Maui. Holy cow. Hi, Gay. That is amazing. I mean, Maui, I think that's a good enough excuse. You might be able to find a yarn store in Maui, though. So devoted to knit. I love Magic Loop because I hate doing a second sock. So you're doing two at a time. That is not something I ever attempted. Hello, Tamara in Texas. I love alliteration. And I've got another Barbara in Bethesda. So we got Tamara in Texas and Barbara in Bethesda. Excellent. Eastern Pennsylvania. I'm just, I'm really excited. I love it. Thank you all for saying hi and for coming. Um, and we already have a question from my golfer. One question, is there a way to know in advance if yarn will be splitty? Does it have to do with the number of plies or is it the fiber or both? Hello, Jenna in Cincinnati. Okay, so splitty yarn, it is both. It is both the yarn structure and the fiber content. Fibers that are grabby, like wools and alpaca and natural and um, animal fibers, do have more of a tendency to cling to each other. So they have less of a possibility of being splitty, unless they're like a plied thing that is very loosely plied. So it's a it's a combination of the fiber and the structure. Something that is 100% wool, but it's a two-ply and it's very loosely spun can be splitty because it's easy to get your needle between those two plies. Even tightly spun, some cottons can be splitty. When you're looking at a cotton or applied linen or a plant-type fiber that doesn't cling to itself, those have a tendency to be splitty. So one way, and I'm just going to grab this that I have here that's sitting here. Okay. So do, 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 do. Hello. If you take a yarn and would look at it in whichever direction it's twisting, twist it in the opposite direction. That is how you'll see how tightly plied it is. When you twist it in the opposite direction, some yarns will open right up. And that means they're fairly loosely plied. Um, so they may be splittier. So a loosely plied cotton is probably going to be splitty. Um, a, the tighter the ply, the less likely it's going to be splitty. Uh, the splittiest yarns I've run into are the ones that are like cotton or another plant fiber that it's literally just like knitting with multiple strands of thread. They're not even plied with each other. So something that has a loose ply, plant fibers, those are all red flags for splittiness. Uh, was that helpful at all? Okay, let's see. A lot of things went by while I was talking. Do, 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 do. Hello, Denise in Marski Town, Florida. <laughs> I 
I feel like that was spelled wrong. Thank you, Knit Eco Chic. I did get my hearts cut. I got all of them. Okay, okay, okay. Hello, Jenna in Cincinnati. Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. Woohoo. Toledo. Hello, Sister Stephanie in Toledo, a yarn shop desert. I'm so sorry. Hello, Mal in New Zealand. Oh, so exciting. We got New Zealand. We got some in Hawaii. We got some in California. We got most of the East Coast, which is very cool. Cotton bamboo. Yes. Concord drink tape, which that is right now winning for the best um, name we have in here right now. Uh, cotton bamboo is, yes, because it's smooth, because it's not grabby, and because it is rarely tightly plied, it can be very splitty. How would you wind up a skein of katahdin? Um, unfortunately, Jane, if you don't have a jumbo winder, the only way to wind katahdin is by hand. And you'll end up with something that's almost a soccer ball. Um, it is unfortunate, but that is just the nature of katahdin. Uh, I do know that I think... I, I mean, I'm assuming you already have it, so this is not going to be helpful, but I think Miss Babs does offer, like, for an extra $5 charge, she'll wind it for you, and they actually ship it wound uh, into a ball, and when I have gotten Katahdin, I, I, I am more than willing to pay somebody five bucks to wind that puppy up for me, because they have jumbo winders. <laughs> and now, at work, if the katan was bought in the store, we have a jumbo winder and we will wind it up. But most of the time, the the customer has to leave it with us because the amount of time it takes to stand there and wind one, even with a winder, is fairly ridiculous. It is a lot of yardage. Okay. Jamie. Jamie. Jamie, 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 Jamie. I will get it right one of these days. Hello, Marin in Seattle. I was just in Seattle. I went to Seattle for the very first time. Love your city. Want to go back ASAP. Uh, we took all of the public transportation. We took bus. We took the monorail. We took the foot ferry. We had a lot of fun. I ate macaroni and cheese. I had a flight of chowder, which was amazing. We went shopping and I had a lot of fun. You have an, I even went into a yarn store, Marin. So very cool. Yes. Let, yes. Eco chic. The round the world knitting is really exciting. Are there needles that work better with splitty yarn? Not pointy. So if you're going to be working with splitty yarn, something that has a blunter tip, it's going to be less likely to split that yarn. It's going to be less likely to split those fibers. So you don't want your chow goos. You might want like even a clover. And since frequently the splitty yarns are plant fibers, which tend to be sort of slippery yarns, a wooden needle with a blunter tip is something that you might want to look into even if it's pretty darn splitty. Uh, Katahdin. Okay, so my golfer has said she never heard of Katahdin. Katahdin is a heavy lace yarn from Miss Babs, and it is absolutely gorgeous. It's BFL, which is Blueface Leicester, and it comes 1,750 yards to a skein. It is a ridiculous amount of yarn, but you can knit an enormous thing and only have to weave in two ends. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. Um, okay. I'm knitting a sweater right now out of cotton bamboo. Is that a good idea? So Knit Eco Chic is answering you. Her specialty is plant fibers. So I would go here, do a gauge sew. Knit Eco Chic, so my Concord drink saying I'm knitting a sweater right now out of cotton bamboo. Is that a good idea? And knit eco chic says, yes, just do a gauge swatch first and block it. Use your blocked gauge to figure out size to knit. So bamboo is definitely one of those fibers that grows when blocked. 
It doesn't have any real grabbiness to it. So it tends to elongate. So you might end up having to knit it at a slightly denser gauge if you are substituting it into a pattern that calls for wool. When you're dealing with cotton blends, cotton bamboo blends, your best path to success is to choose a pattern that was designed to work with that kind of yarn because the designer takes all of its idiosyncrasies into consideration when they are designing that particular thing and they'll put structure and things in it to help it hold its shape. So hello Kelly in Ohio. Um, yes Jamie it is from Miss Babs. I probably should have mentioned that. Hello, Kate in St. Louis, Missouri. Can you make socks from fiber without nylon? What are the consequences? So, yes. Yes, you can. Lots of people make 100% wool socks. But what you're going to want to do is look for something that has a very, very tight yarn structure. The, the more plies and the tighter they're twisted, the stronger they're going to be. Uh, a one 100% wool that is incredibly popular for knitting socks is something called Wollmeisse. It's a German yarn. And again, it's multi-ply. It's got like more than three plies. It's got a lot of tiny plies and it's very, very tightly wound. And why that is, is because that's strength. The reason why most sock yarns have nylon in them is to prevent the socks from wearing out because socks are inside shoes and they're very thin and there's constant rubbing. And that constant rubbing on softer fibers is going to rub holes. So uh, if you want to use a sock yarn without nylon in it, it's important to look for something that is a true sock yarn, which means it has the proper structure and the proper ply and it's really tight. Now, a compromise is that you can get yarns, you can get like a nylon carry along yarn that you carry it along in the toe in the heel to reinforce those two areas while leaving the rest of it just 100% cotton. So that is an option. Um, okay, Marin asked me if I did I, if I went to toot and I'm going to go with no, I didn't go to toot because I don't know what you're talking about. Obviously I have to come back. Um, and the consequences, Kate, of using a hundred percent wool, it, it does tend to wear out faster. The nylon just helps it have less opportunity to wear out, but you can always learn how to darn your socks. And that's a lot of fun. Um, Allison, Allison has asked me, how are my hands now? Are you back to knitting properly yet? I don't know that I ever knit properly, <laughs> but um, I have been knitting a lot more. I still have issues with my thumb. Going to the doctor was spectacularly unhelpful. Uh, they said, no, you're fine. I'm like, but I hurt, but you're fine. We can't find anything wrong with you. So I'm just pacing it. I am knitting uh, a lot more, but I just have to rest a good bit. Yes, Jenna, that is my new shawl. And I have given it a name. When I catch up in the questions, we will talk about the shawl. Um, there we go. And see Ruth. Ruth knits a lot more socks and than I do. And Ruth says she loves nylon, non-nylon. Okay, that's a good point. See, I would have totally missed that point. Ruth says, uh, just make sure you're knitting at a tight enough gauge, like nine to 10 stitches per inch. So again, um, to give that fabric more strength, she's talking about making it a lot denser. Which is nothing I would have known because as hard as I can, as hard as I try, I really can't get below seven stitches per inch. I try as hard as I can. I've gone down to triple zeros, but I just, it's something to do with my knitting style. I can't get those tiny, tiny, tiny stitches. Maybe I should try again when I'm more comfortable with English, but the way I knit right now, I cannot get nine to not, nine to 10 stitches per inch. There we go. Watch T. She says she's about to knit the pride yoke sweater and it's written to use cotton. Live in the South and it's hot. Cotton is fantastic for knitting in the South. So it's great to find ones that are designed for the fiber that you want to knit with. Oh, 
I don't know. <laughs> Ruth says, I've never heard someone say Vulmaisa aloud. I've been saying Wulamis. Thank you. Ruth, there is no telling if I'm saying it right. I'm just making it up. But I've always, when I look at it, it looks like Vulmaisa. But that might me just making up German sounds. <laughs> I will ask, actually, my, uh, my brother and his family live in Zurich, which is right near Germany, and they're learning German. So when I go visit them, I will ask how you pronounce that, and I will get an official ruling about that. There we go. So, and this is why Ruth is here, my golfer. She says, about socks, what are your preferred method to toe up or top down? I don't knit socks. <laughs> so Ruth, toe up, and really, in a group of sock knitters, walking in and saying toe up versus sock, toe up versus cuff down in those fighting words. I mean, really, <laughs> those you're like ready to throw down. They have people have very, very distinct opinions. Um, <laughs> okay, Tracy, what Tracy is asking, what type of projects would you recommend for roving style yarns? So for roving style yarns, I would recommend something that you're not going to wear, that you're not going to sit on, that you're not going to rub against in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so roving is not really meant for knitting. It doesn't really have any spin to it. It is just kind of loosely hanging together. So with any amount of wear, it is going to start pilling it is going to start fraying and it's going to look bad fairly quickly. I think, I mean, is there a specific type of roaming, roving? I, I want to make sure I'm talking about this because I like, um, like Malabriga Rasta is a fat single ply, but it is a felted is pre-felted, so it doesn't have those problems. So I need a little bit more info on what exactly you mean by roving style yarn. Okay, Rebecca, yay, I'm glad I could help. Um, Judy, an occupational therapist who knits. Okay, I will look into that. Thank you, Judy. See, Kate Kearns loves top down. Jenna says, my pronunciation is correct. Woo, my pretend German work. <laughs> no, it's Volumaisa. I don't know. I, I, I it's, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why I had any idea. Um, Ruth says she did sock up, down, and sideways. Toe up is good if you hate grafting. Toe down is good if you are bad at stretchy bind offs. Just try all the socks. That is an excellent. The, the only socks I have ever really knit were toe up, and I did an afterthought heel which means you're just going to knit another. So essentially you start at the toe, start going up. And then when you do the afterthought, it's a top down toe because essentially you're making a sock with two toes. So it has all, it has the grafting and it has the fancy cast on. So it's enough to annoy everyone. Jenna is saying tapestry for roving. That is good. So weaving, doing like a tapestry work, doing something, as I said, something that's not going to see any wear and tear. It's not going to be worn. It's not going to be rubbed against, things like that. <laughs> roving is meant for sitting. That's right, uh, John. Yes, roving looks really cool in tapestries. What app do I like? Tamara is asking, what app do I like best for charting patterns? I use one called InVision Knit. Let me pull it up. Let me go to here. Boop, boop, boop. So this is what I use. It is called InVision Knit. Um, it is my charting software. As you can see, it is only... So we have the demo is only for Windows, but it does say Windows and Mac. So this is the one that I use. One of my primary considerations 
especially now, a lot of them do it now. But when I was looking for charting software, I needed the ability to export to an SVG, a scalable vector graphic, uh, because that make, it doesn't lose quality when you make it bigger or smaller. And a lot of them, when I was looking, only did JPEGs and those don't scale nicely. You can't manipulate them as well. You can lose pixel quality. So Envision it is what I use. Okay, let me see. Um, yes, it will pill, roving will pill too much to actually knit with it. Hello, Denise. Knitting and watching a hockey game. Awesome. Okay, Marin is German. Walmice. Walmice? So that, so she's saying Walmice. It's cool. It is really beautiful yarn. It has amazing colors. Hockey Barbara and knitting. <laughs> now, if there's a little chocolate in there, it'll be awesome. Sister Stephanie says, I tried knitting with cotton once and it was very difficult. There was no give to it at all. I had to fight it every stitch and eventually gave up. Is one kind of cotton easier than another? That is actually the nature of cotton in a lot of plant fibers. Uh, they don't have any stretch to them when you are knitting them. So it does hurt a lot of knitters and crocheters hands because there's no bounce to it. So your hands are under tension. Silk does a lot of the same thing. Now I have knit with Blue Sky Fibers uh, cotton worsted. It's an organic cotton and the way it's spun the actual structure of the yarn gives it some give and I haven't had the problems with it that I sometimes run into with other cotton yarns. So looking at the yarn structure, your cotton yarns like you're going to get at Joann's or Michael's, your sugar and cream, your dishcloth cotton that is designed for sturdiness that has a nice tight ply to it, that has zero give. If you get into some cottons that have looser spins and the multiply but that have like a floof to them, it might work a little bit better for you. Um, okay, all this sock talk made you pull up the chug. Okay, Jamie, not the spinning type of roving yarn. I see some skeins that are roving tapestry like wall hanging. Yes, tapestry like wall hanging. She's talking about weaving, tapestry weaving, and you weave on a tapestry loom. Let me see if I can find an image of them. So let's go back to my Chrome. Okay, so these are tapestry looms. I just Googled tapestry looms and they are super cool, but I think she's talking about something like this. See all of this roving? This is gonna be all roving and see how, let's see what, I have no idea what this website is. Um, I, uh, $200 for a tapestry loom, obviously. But if you look at it, you can see how big and puffy this is the roving style yarn I think you're talking about. So this would be a tapestry weaving that has a mixture of roving style and then some art yarn and all kinds of fun stuff. Another thing that you can use is... Another thing that you can use is for thrumming. Nope, wrong button. Wrong button, sorry. <laughs> so these are thrummed mittens, and you can use the roving style uh, yarn to make thrums on your mittens, and they poof out. I have no idea who this person is. We're just looking at the Googles. But this is definitely an application for roving style yarns. Okay, let's go back here. Um, okay. Dun, 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 dun. People knitting socks. Yay for the sock, knit, sock knitters. Studio, uh, Joanna, Pima Cotton is very soft. Rebecca. Rebecca says, I enjoy watching you teach knitting. Your teaching style reminds me of a good friend of mine. Well, thank you so much. And I'm glad I could bring a good memory to you. 
Um, and I'm glad you've learned stuff, um, even if it's how not to do something. I have some videos that I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Oh, we have a prom chauffeur. Very cool. I am glad to be in your car with you. Yay, Knit Eco Chic. Knit Eco Chic is also endorsing the Blue Sky Fibers Organic Cotton. Let me look up their website. Um, so, do, 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 do. Let's go back to Chrome. So this is the Blue Sky Fibers. We're going to filter, go to the cotton. So this is what we're talking about. This is organic cotton. It's worsted weight. It comes in all of these amazing, amazing colors. And if you look at it, you can see I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it bigger. It has a fairly loose ply to it. I never found it splitty though, but it's nice and it's soft and I find it really, it doesn't really cause strain on my hands the way that some other cottons do. Okay, we have a lot of sock knitters. Next question, Tamara. If you want to knit garments to industry standards, where can you learn or read about how to do this? How do you figure out how to size garments? I have actively avoided learning how to do that. I do not design garments. And one of the reasons is that there is, um, what is the... Okay, one of my one of my designers is going to have the answer for you. If one of y'all can find the link, I know there's a place and the name of the organization is completely who has the charts. <laughs> um who has the charts? There's there it's on the tip of my tongue. Um there there are standards and but some people don't like them. I know that you sold the Teague has made a set of expanded and several other designers have worked on making something that's more accurate and that represents a larger range of body types. Um because a lot of the industry standards are based on um, ready to wear clothing and not necessarily knitwear. So there is a challenge. What is the name of that organization? ASTM. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And Ruth, yes. So Ruth Brash says, Yasolda has a good chart. Craft Yarn Council is off. Yes. So Craft Yarn Council used to be the standard, but they, they are, eh, but it's the ASTM. Um, so, so the ASTM standards, um, you know what? I can't find it, <laughs> but it, just Google for the ASTM sizing standards. I think that is something that a lot of people use. Um, watch tea. I love busy peaches, cotton and tencel. Oh yeah. We got to check her out. I've been seeing, I watch her um, TikToks. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see here. Ruth is talking about Tunisian. Very exciting. Oh, J Jenna is making a cowl from that organ uh, the organic blue sky. It is a great yarn. Um, if I'm going to make a baby blanket, that is absolutely my go-to. Um, um, oh, yarn barn. Is that the yarn yarn? I'm assuming Tracy, that was a typo. The yarn barn. I think that the yarn barn has a lot of weavers. So that might be why you're, if I remember correctly, the yarn barn, um, has a lot of weavers there. It's yes. Um, so those roving yarns are probably to keep mostly the weavers happy. Um, yes. So excellent. There's some rec more recommendations in the chat about sizing standards. Oh, Joanna, that's an excellent. Little Red in the City by Yasolda Teague is a 
good book about sizes. Yes, I know that Yasola has worked very hard to make her sizing inclusive and she shares uh, information on grading. At one point in time, she even had like a spreadsheet that you could download and customize. So there's a lot out there for that. So Karen, what is, what's the best way to pick yarn colors for mosaic knitting or other color work? Hello, Christine in the, you, you're, you're an ooper. Hello, Christine. Um, so best way to pick colors for mosaic knitting or other color work? Well, the best way is to pick colors you love. If you have issues, if you don't feel creative in the color way, or if you feel like you're lacking in color sense, which some people do, I actually have a Pinterest board. And I look through Pinterest, and I save photographs, I save pictures, I save color inspiration. And so I just have a lot. Let me see if I can pull that up. I haven't added to it in a long time, but I, because Pinterest is just a, <laughs> a black hole that you can fall into that is super frustrating. Um, I am logging in. You guys don't need to watch that. Okay. It is, it is just, okay. This is going to drive me bonkers. Now it put me into the business hub. They've completely changed all of this. How do I look at my stuff? Super frustrating. Um, okay. Do, 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 do. See, this is not going to help me at all. Home feed. It's not going to cooperate with me, is it? Oh, here we go. Okay. So there we go. So see this one? I have this one right here that's called Color Combos for Color Work. And what it is, is I just pin things that really stop. I don't want to do it that have colors in them. And then if I'm struggling for trying to decide what to do with something, I come in, I look at these color boards or just go through Pinterest and find something like this. I love this, this orange with teal. I love orange and teal. You'll see a lot of this on this board, but you can see like these, this dark purple with the orange, this, there's just, look at that. Oh my gosh. So it's just nature. Nature is a wonderful place to look for inspiration. Um, just looking at beautiful things and finding the inspiration in these beautiful things can re like, look at this, look at this pink. Okay. This one, this pink with this teal is just I adore it. I absolutely adore it. The colors that you can find in nature are amazing. Things that you would like this yellow with this kind of army green. Who would have thought of that? But it works really, really well. And it's just, this is how I find color inspiration. And then I just borrow. You can also find people who do these. They make palettes. You can find these palettes in design websites all over the place. And these are really good. So what they've done is they've already taken a picture and they've taken color palette out of it. And this would be an amazing palette for knitting something. So I let other people do the work for me. <laughs> Okay. I hope that that was helpful. Um, Karen. Oh, bye, Nithi Toshik. Okay. Christine, basic make one question. When knitting seed stitch border and am making make one before starting cable pattern, how to make one as if to knit or purl? Um, 
that is going to depend entirely on your pattern. I mean, are you just making this pattern up? If not, the, the pattern itself should tell you or should define somewhere what they mean by make one. Um, are the cables out of reverse stockinette? Because if the cables are out of reverse stockinette, I would probably do a purled make one. But, but a really, it just depends on the pattern. I can't give you a definitive answer for that, I'm afraid. The coral flowers with the teal and the brown. See, there's just so many gorgeous, gorgeous colors out there that just, when you start looking, it's why I don't go on Pinterest too much because I go in and I pin this and then I pin that. And then it says, you might like this. And then I'm like, yes, I like that. And it just goes and goes and gone. Thank you, Allison, for joining. Um, so that is, um, where are we? So I'm sorry, Christine, that I can't give you a definitive answer on your make one question. My number one thing is the pattern should tell you. The pattern should have an abbreviation section that says M1 dash and tell you what you're supposed to do. Uh, if it's considering it's a cable and considering frequently you want cables to pop, there's a very high probability it needs to be a pearl uh, make one. So that would be it. Okay, so this puppy back here. Yes, this is the shawl. Yes, it is done. What do you think? So it is enormous. It is 800 yards. I blocked it fairly assertively because, and it is just beautiful and drapey. Um, I am, in writing the pattern, I've said, you know, you don't have to block it so aggressively if you're really loving the texture because I kind of miss the texture of it too, but I wanted to see how big it would get so people would know how big it got. So I blocked it assertively. If you are okay with a smaller shawl, you definitely don't have to block it so assertively and you can have a nubbier, more textury, textury thing. So it does have a name. I ended up, what I'm calling it is Cloudy in Paris because it's the La Bienemy yarn, which is from Paris. And the two colors are Le Grand Nuage and Le Petit Nuage, which means the big cloud and the little cloud. So I just, I thought it was fun and I thought Cloudy in Paris sounded fun, but it's, you don't have to knit it in gray. So the idea with this is I'm calling it a lazy fade, <laughs> okay? So, you know, fades are super popular and you got to do the striping in between them and whatever. For this, it's just, I picked out two colors that were really, really close to each other. And honestly, they looked closer in the skein than they came out. This definitely came out way darker than I expected. But essentially, you just pick two colors that are really, really close to each other. And that was kind of the inspiration here because the La Bienemy yarn that we got into the store had all of these colors that were just so very subtly different from each other. And I was like, what could you do to highlight those just sh subtle shifts? In color. And so the only thing that's delineating between the two colors is this eyelet row. So it's just you knit this pattern, you do this eyelet row in the new color, and then you knit the other color. So it's it's so soft. It is a single ply fingering weight. Um, so it is very, very cool. I, I like it. I'm happy with it. My next step is I just uh, sent my revisions to the tech editor today and I need to get photographs of it. I don't have any models currently, so I got to figure out it's probably going to end up being modeled on my silent partner here. I'll take her out in the backyard or something, but I got to get decent photos of it. The really fun thing, and this is one of the things that I think is just fascinating about the geometry of shawls is this took two balls of yarn. And from here to the eyelets, that's the first ball of yarn. 
and then this little chunk down here, that's the whole second ball of yarn. So that's just showing you how long these rows get. But we have the texture and we'll be doing, I'll be doing a pattern tour of it. It'll probably get released next month once I get pictures, but that is cloudy, cloudy in Paris. So excited about it. Um, okay, Christine, I'm taking a class in blocking ribs, cables, etc. type stitches. I'm working on my sample swatch. I would do a pearl one because you want that cable to pop up. So just do a pearl, make one. Um, it doesn't really matter which way it leans, I don't think, because you're not really shaping anything. So that is Cloudy in Paris. Um, it is a, it is essentially a crescent, but the way that these this increased line makes it go, so it kind of goes straight across the bottom. So I, I don't know. I really like it. that, And that is that woven stitch. So I did a video of the woven stitch. And we had a lot of people asking, what pattern has this in it? I want in it, this in a pattern. And I was like, I have not designed a pattern with it in it. So I decided that maybe it was time to have a pattern with the woven stitch. And that is the video where it's like the one stitch that loves every variegated yarn. Um, it is, hang on. Let me go. Haha, -ha, I can, we can go watch ourselves. It would be like Inception. That would be kind of creepy, I think. Um, you know what? I don't know that I'll be able to find it quickly. Do, 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 do. There it is. Check out this verb. Oh, oh do, do. Okay, you can hear my video playing in the background. Sorry about that. Okay, there's the music. <laughs> I need to mute it. You guys don't want to hear me talking and talking on top of myself. So here it is. So there's me. <laughs> it's me. What are you doing, me? Nope, that way. That way. So, but it's this video, how to do an easy knitting stitch that looks great in variegated yarn. I'm going to fast forward me. So here it is. So that, this is the video for the woven stitch. So this is what's going on in this part. And you can see how good it looks in a super, super variegated yarn. So if you have a variegated yarn that you've been trying to figure out or two variegated yarns, because these don't have to fade. You could do two drastically different colors or you could do two skeins of the same color or, or whatever you wanted to do. Um, so that is definitely what I had in mind when I was designing that. No, so it is not. Marin has asked, is it the same as the linen stitch? It is not the same as the linen stitch. And that video um, here, let me copy the sharing link. Hello, Jackie in Guam. Is it tomorrow there? Thank you so much for joining us. So... Oh, you know what you're going to go watch, Ness. Well, there we go. There's the link. Um, I have not started swatching because the voting does not close until tonight, um, my golfer, my golfing friend. So I, I have to wait. Uh, I, and I don't know who's ahead. Last I checked, the Shibui was ahead. Um, so Marin, so the woven stitch is different than the linen stitch in that the linen stitch is knit one, slip one yarn in front, knit one, slip one yarn in front on the right side. And then the wrong side is mm, pearl one, slip one, pearl one, slip one, pearl one, slip one, pearl one. So you're actually slipping you're, it's essentially doing a seed stitch pattern where you're slipping stitches on every row and they alternate. So you have it, it really, because you're slipping every other stitch on every single row, it really makes a dense fabric and it really compacts things. The woven stitch has the knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, but then it has a rest row. So those little slip stitches are only on every other row. So it 
doesn't have the same, because doing linen stitch in a shawl would result in a shawl that wasn't very drapey because it's a dense fabric, or you'd have to do it on huge needles. The woven stitch, because it has that rest row, lends itself much better to a shawl or to a drapier fabric. As you can see, this fabric has plenty of drape. If I was slipping every other stitch on every row, A, the shawl would probably be about that long and it would be a very dense fabric. So there is a difference between the woven and the linen stitch. Um, Friday the 29th. Yes, see, tomorrow. So it expired. Oh, it's tomorrow in Guam. Hello. Hello, tomorrow. No problem, Marin. That is what Ask Me Anything is all about. It's for me to answer questions, and I really enjoy the questions. Now, just before I got on here, I actually... Um, on my Facebook, there's a discussion going on in the Facebook group, and someone asked, hi, I need some help, please. My pattern says for every other row, work stitches as they appear. And I think I need to do a whole video on the instructions, work as stitches appear, or work work as presented or work in pattern, all of those are meaning the same thing. And she is asking, how do I work yarn overs as they appear? And that is actually an excellent question. Um, whenever I use work as presented, if there are yarn overs, I will say work as presented purling the yarn overs or work as presented knitting the yarn overs. I like to give people guidance on that, but obviously this pattern is not. And this individual said, uh, I told them if you're knitting flat, then you would purl the yarn overs. If you're knitting in the round, knit them. That's assuming you're working in stockinette. And if you're working garter, it's a whole nother uh, ball of wax. Um, it is a more complicated question than it looked on surface. And then the individual said, yes, I'm knitting in the round. What a relief. They did it right. But then they asked another question. Um, I just thought of something. I'm knitting on circular needles, but not connecting. Do I still knit the yarn overs? And this is, it is a base. Um, it's something... Okay, so they just looked it up and hopefully they've gotten it figured out. What happens is people think knitting on circular needles and knitting in the round are synonymous. So when I asked, are you knitting in the round? They said, I'm on circular needles. So yes, I'm knitting in the round, but you can knit flat on circular needles. Um, and technically, you can knit in the round on straight needles, but it is a fancy pants thing that you have to do and it's kind of a pain in the butt, but you can do it. You can knit, you can knit a tube on straight needles, it involves slipping stitches, but oh my gosh, it's a hassle. Um, so the answer is if you're knitting flat and you're knitting in stockinette, typically, the yarn overs are going to be purled because you want it to present as a knit on the right side. If you're knitting in the round and you're knitting, if you're knitting flat and you're knitting a garter based pattern, then you would knit the purls because you want it to present as a purl on the front because you're no, 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 I think you would still purl it. That's a little confusing. Patterns should be specific, and that's my belief. But if you are, if you, so if you're working flat, you're going to purl the yarn overs. If you're working in the round, you're going to knit the yarn overs. Typically, on average, the pattern really should tell you what you need to do. Okay. Yes, Sylvia said, give me a thumbs up. Yes, I would really appreciate it if you would give the video a thumbs up, like it, because the more you like it, it then the more people will see this and the more I'll know that y'all are really enjoying this and I can continue to do lives in the future. Also, once we're done, if you can, sh if you think that you have any friends or if you're on any knitting groups or any knitting Facebook groups that you think might enjoy, always feel free to share the URL, share the link, all that fun. Uh, now, 
next month. So, you know, my plan was last Thursday of every month. Next month, I should still be able to do it, but Thursday is... What day is thir the last Thursday? The last Thursday is going to be the 26th. I'm flying to Switzerland on the 28th. So I might be a little scattered on that date. It's actually, I'm really excited about this. My brother lives in Switzerland with his family and my niece, my oldest um, niece or nephew is graduating from high school. So we are going to the whole family, me, my family, my sister, her family, my mother, we're flying over there to help her celebrate her graduation from high school in Switzerland, Zurich specifically. And actually it's kind of funny. So we bought all the tickets and we made all his plans. And then like, about a month after we'd gotten everything, we had our reservations and everything. <laughs> The school notified my brother that because of COVID, this is the first graduation they're going to have in two years, each student only gets three guests. So we're going to go over there and not actually attend the graduation, but we are going to be there to celebrate. And honestly, I don't know if attending a high school graduation entirely in German would have been particularly entertaining for me. So those things tend to be tedious, but we're there to support, you know, the people we love. And I'm super excited. I'm going to be there for two weeks. I'm going to be home for a week. And then I'm going to go visit my sister in St. Thomas for the last week of June. So there's a distinct possibility I'm not going to be able to sneak a live in in June. And if I do, it will not be on the last Thursday. It'll have to be on a different day. Oh, yes, the hills are alive. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And let me tell you, so we're talking about the different things we can do. And the I've been watching YouTube videos of the best places to go and all that kind of stuff. I am not looking for pity, Sylvia. I am super excited. I haven't traveled in forever. This will actually be my first time leaving this country. I have never used a passport before. I've never, I mean, I've traveled to all different kinds of areas in the United States, but I've never been out of the United States. I'm very excited about this. And I'm very excited to be giving my 15 year old son this experience so early in his life, because I think it's really important. So the only way I've traveled is via the internet. I'm so excited about being in Europe. Um, Oh, so the only thing, like, I've watched a bunch of videos, and I'm talking about different villages we might visit and stuff, but in Zurich, the number one thing I have on my list to do is the Lint Chocolate Factory has a, like, corporate tour kind of situation that you can go to and tour and see how they make chocolate, and at the end of it, they have an all-you-can-eat chocolate area. So that is definitely my one non-negotiable excursion. I'm just so excited about that. I'm going to eat all the chocolate. Um, it is going to be so fun. So I watched this video on YouTube and the person was so like, like at the end of the tour, they go in this one room and they have these big columns with liquid chocolate in them and they have little spigots and you have a little spoon and it's like those DIY yogurt places and you dispense the chocolate into the spoon and stick in your mouth. And then they have other ones that have chocolate bars in them that you turn a crank and it cracks off a piece. I'm just like, yes, I'm going to eat all the chocolate. Um, I don't think we're going to get out of Switzerland. Jonna, you're in the Netherlands, Finland. I'm, I've always been a little fuzzy as to exactly where you are. Um, chocolate and knitting do go together. I've been wondering with the ones with the spigot, if I can pull like a Homer Simpson and just lay under it. And, but I'm pretty sure I'd get kicked out. Um, I will most likely get myself sick, Cindy. I think, yeah, the Netherlands. Um, I don't think we're going to get out of Switzerland. We're going to be in Zurich. Um, I think we're going to try to visit, um, Stein M. Rhine. It's where the Rhine Falls are. And I think we're going to try to visit um, Lauerbrunnen. Um, 
I'm not 100% sure. Uh, again, it's going to be with family. And, you know, family always has ideas about what they want to do. We did look into, I mean, it's the max we're going to be able to do is like maybe a two hour train ride because we have rented um, like apartments that were uh, apartments that are set up for business travelers, but my husband found them. And so we have an apartment in Zurich that's going to be where we're going to stay. So we're going to, we're restricting like where we're going to go within two hours. I don't think you can get to the Netherlands in two hours, but I would love to go to the Netherlands. I want to go everywhere. Arnetta, I am not a wine drinker, but I also understand that Switzerland has a lot of delicious cheese. So that is definitely on my list as well. I think my sister has found a cheese train where it's like a train you take and you visit different places where they make cheese and you eat cheese. So I'm totally down for the cheese train as well. So as yes, a three hour tour, Sylvia. <laughs> So I'm going to have cheese and I'm going to have chocolate and, and apparently sausage. Apparently there's a lot of sausages in Zurich because of its proximity to Germany. Because the Germans love their, their sausages, which I am all 100% here for. I'm just excited. You know what? I did there. Roslet. Yes. DM Hetz. Roslet. I found out about that. Totally want to eat that. And then also there's, there's like these potato pancakey things they do that that my my sister-in-law says is like a giant hash brownie kind of situation gonna eat those I'm just excited I'm excited about seeing the beautiful the old 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 world um you know having been here in the United States for all of my life I've never seen these medieval type things and I'm just I'm excited. And yes, I looked up. There are definitely multiple yarn stores in Zurich. I'm going to try to hit as many as I want. Rusty. So Jonna said, Rusty. Yes, I want some of those. I have a list. Mostly I have a list of things I'm going to eat because priorities. But I'm, I'm really excited. So Back to, I wanted to let y'all know that the next couple months, we definitely, I'm going to do my best to do May. June is going to be a little bit hanky. Um, as far as scheduling goes, I'm going to try to get videos done before I leave and have them set. I may or may not be successful in that, but I will give it the old college try. Now, I had something I wanted to share with y'all and we're coming up on an hour. So, Okay. So, I bought something at my store. Now, you're like, okay, whatever. You got to understand that I've worked at yarn stores for long enough that I know that if I bring everything I like home, I'll end up having a yarn store in my home. And I don't need a yarn store in my home. So, I kind of consider the entire store my stash. Like, it just stays there until I need it. Um, and this came in and I was like, okay, I have to give other people, I have to give customers the opportunity to purchase this. But I came back after a week and we still had a copy or two. So I got one. This is the new making magazine. Okay. Making magazine is amazing, but this one has this really cool thing. And I think Joanna is going to know exactly how to do this, but I have never heard of it, and I'm super excited about the idea of it. And what it is, is it's called flower pounding. And you mordant a piece of natural fabric, and then you pick flowers, and then you sandwich it between wax paper, and then you pound it until the dye goes into the fabric. And I just think the idea of hitting a, flowers with a hammer, it sounds like fun. And then in this they have you embroider. So I'm so, so excited. Oh, thank you, my golfer, for being here. Um, so I'm so excited about this, and I've got to figure out how to do that. But I honestly think I have, I'm going to make a garment. Y'all know I don't make garments. I don't design garments. I've never made a garment, and I think I found my first garment, and it is this one. Whoop. And I'm going to, I showed you that. That's the biggest picture. 
But in the pattern itself, one of the things that I'm like, I can do this is because look, it's modeled on this lovely lady who is close to like my body type. So I'm very excited about this. And let me tell you, how serious am I about actually knitting a garment? I bought the yarn. Woohoo! So I have the yarn. It's designed, as I said, um, if you want to knit with plant fibers, getting a pattern that was designed to work with the plant fibers is a good idea. So this is the yarn. So it's designed for linen yarn. I'm going to use linen yarn. This is, look how pink that is. I'm so excited. And I bought, I bought enough to make the sweater. It's in there and there's a needle in there and everything. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a sweater. I'm going to do it. I'm going to bite the bullet. I've read through it. I think I understand what is happening. So I'll probably, I don't know, I'll probably take pictures of it. So if you follow me on Instagram, you might see this process. I'm very, very excited about this. It's more of a t-shirt and everything. Yes. Yo, Joanna, it is eco printing with a hammer. I'm just excited about the idea of eco printing with a hammer. It makes me excited. Um, oh, thank you, Ruth, for joining us. And thank you for all your assistance with the crochet in Tunisian and sock portion of the program. Um, I really appreciate you joining us because I don't know everything and I can always learn. So you can night, Ruth. Um, yay, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to make it. Now, I probably might need more yarn because it's designed to be cropped. I'm definitely going to do short sleeves because I don't need long sleeves. And I might knit it longer because I I don't know if I can do a crop kind of thing. Yes, there's an eight-hour flight to Switzerland. So I may get this. What I'll probably do is maybe get the, get the fronts and backs started because it's knit separately and then joined and then knit. So we'll see how far I get. So that is definitely something. And John, the odds of me designing sweaters are very, very low. There's too much math, but I'll never say never, maybe one day. I also, I've been kind of on a buying binge. Um, I'm gonna show you, I wanna share with you this place I found. We're gonna go back to Chrome. So this is, a uh, independent um, business person who makes all kinds of fun stuff for, look at these bags, aren't they cool? They have clear bags. She has all kinds of interesting kind of stuff. Here we go. And what I ordered is this Notions pouch. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? It's sparkly. I could not resist this. I was like, that, that had to be mine. Um, it is pink. It is sparkly. And it, it, it says something funny that I'm not going to read out loud because I don't want to get in trouble with YouTube. But there you go. It's hilarious. And I, I thought if I showed it to y'all, some of y'all might want it. So I got it from Black Pearl Magic. I follow them on Instagram. Um, it is super. They, she's got really, really cool stuff. Um, let me see. Ah, oh, look at the bags. You know me and bags, people. The clear bags, though. These I've never seen anywhere. And they're really, these clear bags. Where'd it go? See, they, they sell out so fast. Um, so I wasn't able to get my hand on one of those. But isn't that cool? One of these days, one of these days, I'll get a hold of one of those. But the Notions pouch made me happy. So I got that. Um, we'll go back to my phone. Okay. It, it is. It's hilarious. It's just... It makes me happy. I'm going to have to be careful with it because the sparkles, I really don't want to get glitter on my knitting, but it was worth it. It was absolutely worth it. And I think it makes me happy. <laughs> and that's what it's all about is having stuff around that makes you happy. Um, 
Okay, if y'all got a couple more minutes, one other thing, as I said, I've kind of been on a shopping binge and I got this for my printmaking and I thought I'd share it with y'all because it's a craft supply and it's something that I never knew existed, but it is, I'm gonna use it in my printmaking and I ordered it, so this, See this? This is um it could be bandwidth. I'm so sorry if I if my um voice has gone off. It might be bandwidth. I don't know if other people are having that problem. It could be bandwidth on my end. Oh, it might be on my end. Who knows? Is it still going on? Maybe it's telling us it's time to go. I'm so sorry. It, I don't know what's happening. Oh, that's an inter interesting idea, Tracy. Put a clear quote on it. Okay, well, I guess I'll have to save this for next time. But look, sparkly things. I don't want to annoy y'all and have it all go wonky. So apparently an hour... A little over an hour is our maximum amount of... Okay, I'm going to tell you what this stuff is because it just cracks me up. I'm sorry if I'm on a delay for y'all. So this... Here, I'm just going to slide a little bit out. My voice doesn't match lips. I don't know what's causing that. So this, look. It's called the Punchinella, Okay. And it is what's left over from making sequins. Who knew this existed? So this is this like the leftover product that they've punched the sequins out. But I'm going to use it to print with to like make stencils and patterns. And I got a bunch of them. I got 13 different kinds. And it was just random what they sent me. Look how cool it is. It's just really interesting. So I got all of these little, these they're like these little sheets of aluminum or plastic or whatever they are. Um, yeah, exactly, Cindy. I was like, what the heck is that? Used to weave on this, Deborah. Very cool. So look at that one. Here, I'll put something white behind it so you can see. It's so, look at it. See, it's it's sequin material and it's the leftovers. And I just think it's really interesting. Um, and what I'll do is I'll put ink on my jelly plate and then I'll put this on top of it like a mask and then press either paper or fabric over and pull it off. And it'll only like, it'll, you can do a positive, you can do a negative. And it's just a really interesting way to do textures. Look at this one. This one is so cool. Oh, oh no, this one doesn't want to come out. It's stuck. Oh, ah, sorry, y'all. See, this is why. This is why this is live and not edited. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I didn't know it existed. I just stumbled across it. I watched a YouTube video of someone doing printmaking using it. And it was just like, oh, I must have that. And then I found someone who was selling it. So I think, I don't know, I can't even remember. I was just like, yes, buying. Um, and that same company also had these things, which are silicone plates designed for putting texture into polymer clay. And I'm going to play with them and using them to like make patterns in my printmaking. So, and the name, uh, I don't know if this, I don't know. I, I might have to find the link for that because it was some random link I followed that went somewhere and I don't even remember where I found it. But so these came and they're, I got to put them away because I don't want to lose them because I'm so excited about them. But so, of course, my idea is that I'm going to use this stuff to print on the fabric. And then once it's printed on, it's embroidered. But then I'm also looking forward to the idea of doing a hammer eco print. 
thing. I get so, so distracted. I get distracted by all the shinies, just like every one of y'all do. Um, it does look like honeybee houses. Uh, great for, yes, Gail, it would be really cool for scrapbooking. You could use it to like stamp. I bet if you put it down and like stamped over it, you'd get an interesting texture. It's just all kinds of cool stuff. So, oh, I missed one. It did not go back in the bag. So it has to go back in the bag. I will get it all fixed up. Look, it's in my a good yarn bag. So many bags. Thank you all so much for joining me and spending all this time with me again on a Thursday evening. It is so much fun. Squirrel, exactly, Sylvia. She just typed squirrel in all caps. It's like, oh, look at that. It is so nice to talk to y'all um, because... You're kindred spirits. You are, you know, in my heart and you just feed me, you know, <laughs> you feed me and get me excited about things and remind me why I'm doing all of this it, it, because it's like real, you're real. I mean, when I make my videos, I think about y'all but it's ahead of time and it's mostly just me talking to my, my computer. But now on Thursdays, last Thursdays, my computer talks back and it's y'all and, and I really appreciate it. Um, it. It is fantastic. Community building, you're right. It's good to see you, Jana. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, as you remember, give this a thumbs up, like it, share it. You know, we can build our community more and and just have a lot more fun and spread all of the entertaining and wacky crafting stuff we like to do. So thank you all so much. Y'all have a lovely evening and I will see you next week. Okay. Good night, y'all. Where's the button? Boop. End.